is up guys EJ here back with another video and uh, today is gonna be my uh, weekly movie review roundup uh, episode 3 so I've got um, six uh, movies to talk about this week that I watched this week uh, so let's get started so uh, on Sunday uh, December 13th I watched uh, Shaun the Sheep movie um, didn't know much about this movie I only added it because it got nominated uh, for a uh, best animated film at the Golden Globes uh, this past week or week and a half ago. Yeah, usually I go through the uh, nominations list. I did the same thing with the SAG Award nominations. Any film, any of the major categories, um, films that got nominated that I'm not aware of, not already on my Netflix queue, I'll just add them to the list. And so Sean the Sheep movie came out back in February, I wasn't really aware of it or I didn't care to see it at the time. Anyway, it's a cute little animated film uh, uh, from Ardman Studios, of course, uh, the animation studio, claymation British studio uh, that of course made uh, Wallace and Gromit and uh, Chicken Run, which I'm a big fan of, I love Chicken Run. Wallace and Gromit, not so much, and, and uh, The Curse of the Were-Rabbit, I wasn't a huge fan of either of either uh, but yeah Sean the sheep movie it's a cute little movie about his uh, about this farmer and his uh, flock of sheep uh, the sheep is sort of bored with the daily routine of their lives and uh, they sort of want to take a day off put the farmer to sleep but unwittingly uh, there's a mix-up and he ends up in a uh, caravan headed off to the big city asleep in this van and so the sheep decide to band together and go to the big city and bring him home. Um, yeah, it's typical claymation animation in the style of uh, Chicken Run and, and those films, Wallace and Gromit and so on. Uh, yeah, it was a cute little movie. I enjoyed it. Um, I was really tired when I watched it, so I did actually fall asleep through parts of it. Uh, I'm just absolutely knackered, to be honest, this week. Um, worked a lot. Um, but yeah... Sean the Sheep movie I gave a generous 7 out of 10 it's not something I would buy um, there's, I don't think there's barely any dialogue it's all sort of muffled sounds sort of sounds that sound like dialogue but no actual real dialogue uh, but the animation is cute and some of the gags are cute it's a cute little movie Sean the Sheep movie 7 out of 10 okay moving on to uh, Monday um, December uh, 14th, I watched uh, Danny Collins. Again, this is another film I hadn't really heard of, but I saw uh, Al Pacino got nominated, I believe, for a Golden Globe for Best Actor in the uh, Comedy section. I'm not sure if that's right or not. Uh, but yeah, this is a pretty decent film, directed by uh, Dan Fogelman. Um, Al Pacino plays uh, Danny Collins, a uh, sort of aging... Uh, not really a rock star, he's more of a sort of pop star in the vein of somebody like Bobby Darren or uh, one of those types. Um, well into his uh, 60s or whatever. Still living off his glory days and he's kind of come to the end of his road as far as singing the same old tunes. He hasn't written a new song in over 30 years, he says. Uh, he's just he's singing other people's songs, he doesn't write songs anymore. And he's sort of bored with the whole thing. Um, his manager is played by uh, Christopher Plummer, who's always great. Uh, but he decides he's sort of going to cancel the rest of his big tour that he's on. And he's going to go to... Uh, yeah, he catches his girlfriend, his wife, young wife, sleeping around on him. And he decides he's going to drop everything and go to uh, New Jersey to sort of try and rekindle a relationship. Uh, with his uh, son, uh, which he's never met, and the son is played by uh, Bobby Cannavale, um, who's appearing in a lot of movies uh, that I've seen recently. Uh, he was in Ant-Man, which I watched uh, last week, and he's in another movie that I'll talk about later in this video. Uh, but yeah, Bobby Cannavale sort of blowing up, uh, probably ever since his great turn on uh, Boardwalk Empire. Uh, the season he was on on that show, he was fantastic, and now he's appearing in a lot of movies uh, in recent years. Uh, he's married to, uh, uh, what's her name? 
Uh, Jennifer Garner, who's always good. Um, they have a young daughter, and uh, so Al Pacino. He uh, he rents this room at this hotel, sort of indefinitely, and the hotel is is run by uh, Annette Bening. She's the hotel manager, so there's a uh, sort of very flirtatious relationship between uh, Al Pacino and Annette Bening, and she doesn't want anything to do with him really, because he's kind of a cad, kind of this silly aging pop star, uh, but he's very charming. He's very funny. Um, yeah, it's a really really good performance by Pacino, sort of. Not the, it's still got the uh, sort of Pacino charisma, um, but not as sort of over the top as some of his other performances that he's well known for. Um, yeah, I like this movie. It was a good movie. Um, not a great film, I didn't think, but um, yeah, there's some good good performance all around here, uh, especially Pacino, uh, Annette Bening, and Bobby Cannavale. I thought were all terrific, and uh, Jennifer Garner and Christopher Plummer are also all very good. Yeah, just a good movie. Again, I gave it a 7 out of 10. Okay, moving on to uh, Tuesday, uh, December 19th, uh, the big film of the week, and that is uh, Mission Impossible uh, Rogue Nation. Um, yeah, sort of a very espionage-themed uh, week this week, because I watched three spy movies. None of which were James Bond movies as well, interestingly enough. Uh, but yeah, I absolutely love this film, uh, Mission Impossible, Rogue Nation, uh, directed by Christopher McQuarrie. Um, I was a huge fan of uh, Ghost Protocol um, from, was it 2011 now? I thought that was, up to date, I thought that was the best Mission Impossible film. Uh, but this film was just as good, if not better. Um, Tom Cruise, fantastic, fantastic as Ethan Hunt. Of course, uh, Alec Baldwin's the uh, director of the CIA, and he's sort of hell bent on dissolving the IMF and putting an end to uh, their escapades, if you like. And uh, Ethan Hunt, Tom Cruise decides to go rogue to catch this, uh, to bring down this uh, sort of counter organization called the Syndicate. Um, yeah, it's a really cool film. Loads of great action set pieces. The cast is uniformly terrific. Of course, Simon Pegg, great as the comic relief. Uh, Ving Rhames, awesome. And uh, Jeremy Renner, good as well. Like I said, Alec Baldwin, some really terrific scenes with him, especially him and Renner. Um, yeah, loads of great action. The uh, But the real sort of standout star of this film was uh, the newcomer, uh, Rebecca Ferguson who played Ilsa, sort of this uh, double agent who's uh, working both sides of the uh, the syndicate and uh, uh, British intelligence. Um, she was fantastic. I absolutely loved her. Uh, every scene she was in, she was just great. And there's uh, probably my favorite scene in the whole film was the uh, the bike chase um, out of, uh, yeah, it was, was in Rome? I think it was, took place in Rome. But uh, Renner and Bing Rames are in a car uh, trying to find Ethan Hunt in Rome. Um, and they, they run into uh, this, but the beginning of the bike chase. Um, the girls on the bike and uh, Ethan Hunt and Simon Pegg are in a car following them. And then there's a whole bunch of other guys on bikes following them. And they run into each other almost in the middle of the street. And they're like, oh, we found him. And they have this look between the four of them, uh, between two guys in the uh, the Jeep and Ethan Hunt and Simon Pegg in the car. It's a really great moment. Yeah, just loads of fun. Looked like the people were enjoying making this film uh, throughout. Just so many great moments. Uh, the whole diving into the uh, into the uh, underwater round thing to, to grab, to switch out the uh, fucking profile car card uh, so they could still still this uh i don't even know it's it's it was just it was just a kick-ass film from beginning to end i absolutely loved it uh ghost protocol not ghost protocol rogue nation uh mission impossible rogue nation i gave an eight out of ten yeah one of the best action movies of the year for sure okay moving on to uh wednesday december uh, 16th i watched uh cooties uh change of pace if you like uh horror comedy uh, i rented this because uh, of my man Jay, 
uh, Absolute Sublime One. Um, you should all know him. Great YouTuber, good buddy of mine for a number of years now on YouTube. Um, he uh, he talked about this film in a recent Blu-ray and DVD pickup uh, video he did, um, and I hadn't heard of it. I I liked the look of it. I saw who was in the cast, and I was like, yeah, I'll rent this. Always enjoy a good horror comedy uh, once in a while. So uh, yeah, good fun movie. Um, Elijah Wood plays a uh, sort of aspiring author who uh, comes from New York back to his hometown to be a substitute teacher uh, for the summer or something. He's uh, working as a sub, and uh, one day at the beginning of school, uh, he's new to the school. He's a new sub at the school, sort of elementary school. Um, he runs into his old an old friend, uh, played by Allison Pill. And she's going out with the uh, PE teacher, uh, played by Rain Wilson. Um, so there's a good dynamic between all three of those. But of course, the film is about crazy, flesh-eating, uh, zombie-like children. Um, the opening scene of how the uh, chicken nuggets got made and how they, those ended up in the school cafeteria and how the little girl eats them. and That's really disgusting. That sort of sets up the whole movie. That opening uh, montage, if you like, from chicken chicken slaughterhouse farm, if you like, into the uh, mouth of a uh, of a little girl, and then the mayhem that ensues from there. Loads of fun. Um, yeah, it got real pretty quick. I mean, <laughs> this film got gets dark and gets into it pretty quick, which I like. Uh, which I like films to do, like uh, like this, um, same thing with like San Andreas. Films that were disasters and horror and don't don't mess around, just get into the good shit right, right away. And uh, I like how those films get sort of get going early and then you can just enjoy all the mayhem and oh look, Carnage! That was probably the best line in this movie. Um, yeah, it was a cool fun film, I will say the only biggest appointment was the ending, it was so abrupt. And so, just like, okay, well, uh, that's it, we're done. Uh, there seemed to be at least like 10, 15 minutes they could have added on uh, to sort of wrap up the story a little bit better. But yeah, a cool film, uh, fun performances by Elijah Wood, uh, Ray Wilson, and Allison Pill. Um, yeah, cool little movie. Cooties, I gave a six. I would have given it a seven, but for the ending. Okay. Uh, Thursday, December 17th, uh, yeah, back to the espionage films, I watched, uh, The Man, uh, the new, uh, The Man from Uncle, uh, new, uh, Guy Ritchie film, of course, uh, based on the, uh, TV show from 1960s, I think it's 1964 or whatever, of course, uh, post, uh, post-World War II, uh, Cold War, uh, scenario where, uh, a American spy and a Russian spy team up uh, to uh, to bring down a uh, arms dealer. Um, they team up with a German mechanic. Uh, yeah, really cool film. Uh, sort of sort of more in the vein of uh, Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy as opposed to a James Bond type or a Ethan Hunt Mission Impossible type. Um, but yeah, still a cool film. Uh, I really enjoyed Henry Cavill as Solo. I thought he was great, very funny, very witty, uh, very dapper. And uh, I'm not sure about uh, Army Hammer as uh, the Russian uh, spy as Ilya. Um, and uh, Alicia Vikander, uh, who seems to be everywhere at the moment. Um, she plays uh, Gabby, the, uh, the, the uh, German uh, mechanic who they rescue, well, he rescues her out of East Berlin uh, at the beginning of the film, and Elia is the Russian KGB agent who's like chasing them and trying to kill him, and then of course they have to team up uh, later on to bring down this, uh, this nuclear arms deal. Yeah, it takes place sort of right before the nuclear, or after the nuclear arms race, because uh, of course the nuclear bomb would be invented by then. Uh, but the uh, the leader of the uh, I really like the girl who played the uh, the bad girl uh, Victoria uh, Elizabeth uh, Debicki. I thought she was good in this. Um, Hugh Grant makes a very nice appearance as uh, Waverly, as the guy who sort of puts everything together. 
Um, who else was in this? Yeah, it was a cool film. Um, had some good moments. Uh, yeah, it was really a good movie. Uh, the Man from Uncle, maybe they'll make some sequels. They sort of set it up that way, I think. Um, but yeah, cool film. Uh, the Man from Uncle, I gave a 7 out of 10 as well. Okay, last night, the last film I watched, uh, Friday, uh, December 18th, I watched uh, Spy, um, directed by uh, Paul uh, Feig, who of course uh, directed Bridesmaids um, and The Heat, and this of course stars uh, Melissa McCarthy. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of Bridesmaids, I uh, wasn't a huge fan of The Heat, and in general, uh, I mean, I like M Melissa McCarthy, but I don't like a lot of her films. A lot of her movies recently have sort of been hit, uh, hit or miss, uh, but mostly miss. Um, I was not a fan of Tammy. I did not like, I really didn't like The Heat that much. Um, I thought Identity Thief uh, was pretty good. Uh, Jason Bateman and her were good in that. And I liked her a lot in Bridesmaids. Um, what else she's done recently, I'm not too sure but those are sort of the big ones um but yeah i really i really like this film i wasn't was not expecting to like it that much uh, i wasn't impressed by the trailer but this film just it sort of starts out in a sort of normal typical comedic way and then it sort of takes it up a, to a weird notch uh which is kind of weird um yeah she plays a cia analyst who's sort of the eyes and ears of a uh, super agent um uh, Bradley Fine, played by uh, Jude Law, who's great, um, at the uh, CIA, and uh, he gets killed during a mission, and uh, all the other CIA agents are compromised, uh, all their identities are known, so of course the CIA, <laughs> who's headed by Allison Janney, and I love Allison Janney, um, one of my favorite sort of character actresses. Uh, she's great on the show Mom, which I actually haven't been watching this season. Um, but I just always liked her in general. She's just a cr really funny. Uh, she's great in this. She sends uh, McCarthy out on assignment to, to, again, take down a nuclear arms deal. A lot of nuclear arms deals in these esp uh, espionage films. Uh, so she's the one whose task was sort of following and tracking these people. Uh, most notably, uh, the woman played by Rose Byrne, uh, who's great always. Um, what's his name? Jason Statham, hilarious, is another agent who sort of thinks he can do it all by himself, and he just gets in Melissa McCarthy's way throughout the whole film. And like I said, it sort of starts out in your typical uh, spy comedy way, if you like, but then, like, it starts getting. Like, the language just goes from, like, 5 to 10. <laughs> when Melissa McCarthy hooks up with uh, Rose Byrne and becomes her personal bodyguard, uh, there's some really funny stuff between the two of them. Uh, Rose Byrne, just, just great, as sort of this ruthless woman in charge of this criminal organization trying to broker this arms deal. Between who, of course, who's the, uh, the quote... Uh, the other villain is played by Bobby uh, Bobby Cannavale, who I mentioned earlier. Um, but yeah, real real big surprise. I really enjoyed it. Lots of cool and <laughs> Melissa McCarthy just uh, fighting, and uh, there's a great fight scene between her and this other woman in the kitchen, which I really enjoyed. S there's some scenes where it looks really fake, but especially when she's like riding a motorcycle through tra traffic and stuff. There's a couple shots. Um, that don't really look that right, uh, but overall the the tone of this film it just it just switched from this to this, and I kind of enjoyed it. For the most part, when the films sort of change tone a lot, it's sort of it's it's a bad thing usually. But this film it sort of made it, made it a lot better, a lot funnier, and it was just it was just a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it, and I did not expect to enjoy it as much as I did going in. So Spy, I gave a, uh, a 7 out of 10 as well. So uh, those are the six movies I've seen this past week. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, with Christmas coming up, the uh, schedule, or well, not schedule, just the type of movies I'll be watching will be a little bit different. I'll still be renting stuff from Netflix, 
I'm going to throw in some of my traditional yearly trilogies in there. Um, of course, Star Wars is out, of course. I'm probably going to watch it Boxing Day. So before anybody asks, when are you going to see Star Wars? Our plan is to go see it Boxing Day, which uh, might mean that it will be until like a couple episodes uh, that I actually talk about it. Maybe I'll extend next week's episode just to talk about Star Wars because we might go to a matinee. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you think of the films I've uh, talked about uh, this week. And uh, thank you for watching as always. And until next time, I'll see ya. Bong. James Bong.